And for me, I really like bending tube and creating things out of uh, tubing. And whenever I can weld aluminum, when I TIG weld, I love chasing that little blue light all over aluminum. That's kind of my go-to. Hi, ho I'm Tony, and welcome to the Jeep Talk Show, where we put the fun in off-road fun. This is the only show where you can hear Jeep owners talk about things like mud, rocks, and giant tires and not get weird looks. Well, I guess maybe they give you looking weird at us. We just don't know because we can't see them. Anyway, so strap in, grab your favorite be beverage, and get ready to laugh, learn, and have a damn good time. We guarantee that after listening to us, you'll have that sudden urge to go get that beverage I just mentioned because you mm -hmm. weren't thinking about it before. going to buy a Jeep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Buy a Jeep and a beverage and That's hit the right. trails. Don't say we didn't warn you. Mm -mm. On tonight's episode, how many iPhones does it take to make a Jeep payment? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> That's what your beverage is. <laughs> yeah. Yes, exactly. And in Larry's segment, so you want to start fabricating. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. I do. Let's learn. And in must-have for your Jeep, an OEM dash switch. Does anybody know what OEM means? I, I guess not. It costs a oh. lot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I like original. that. Original. It's, it's original. <laughs> original original equipment manufacturer. Orig yes. Are you ready? It's time for the Jeep Talk Show with hosts Tony, Josh, Wendy, and Chuck. Well, howdy. It's Wendy, and I'm really hoping that you get to take your Jeep out for the upcoming 4th of July and enjoying the great outdoors. Hi, I'm Larry, and I like to stick things together with electric glue. <laughs> I thought Ooh. it was going to be a fork and outlet. I was uh, I was nervous. <laughs> well, I think he's tried that too, but let's see. <laughs> That's probably how he learned to do welding uh, initially exactly. yeah. when he was Might a young had. when he was a youngster. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> hey, I want to remember you remember. I want to remind you guys about our Patreon. You can become a Patreon subscriber. And you know, I recently did a interview with Monica of Meek Magnets. They make uh, armor, body armor for your Jeep. It's it just sticks on the sides. It's either a magnet or it has uh, this kind of a not actual adhesive, but the plastic stuff that's on the back of it will ad adhere to your aluminum side panels. So you can get, uh, Larry, I don't know, did you, did, you remember Zabo? He actually was the one that injured himself and had to have stitches on his arm. Did you see yes. his Jeep? I seen that, and it looked like he was running some of those. It was beautiful. I had no idea that was the Meek Magnet stuff. It was so detailed. The artwork on it was so detailed and 100% customized between him and uh, Monica's team. It, wasn't yeah. that a beautiful Jeep? Yeah, and, and that's the whole thing with the JL, with the, all the aluminum door, door skins and everything. The ones I have for the JK wouldn't work, so they did a great job when they designed those. Very, very nice. And I had no idea. I thought it was uh, just a uh, uh, standard vinyl graphics. But uh, talking to Monica, I found out that uh, it was actually Meek Magnets. So I uh, did an interview with her. And you can actually watch. I said watch, not listen. Watch that entire interview on as a Patreon subscriber. So there's several uh, exclusive Patreon content available for our Patreon subscribers. And on top of all that, you get uh, ad-free episodes. You get uh, early access to the episodes. You get a Jeep Talk Show sticker. And there's discount codes. And I have not mentioned this before. There's also, it's not on there yet, but we have a Meek Magnet uh discount code that's going to be going up there so nice yeah uh -oh. oh yeah these are me now <laughs> well you're already a subscriber so you know <laughs> you could have duke all over your jeep that's Ooh, the that's the way i would go that would be neat yeah <laughs> uh so all right so uh as uh, josh used to bring to us uh, crazy criminals doing crazy things in jeeps uh so <laughs> this miami man was charged after nearly uh 20 foil wrapped phones Found inside of the of, of his Jeep. I, I, Wait, well, I'm guessing foil it's as Jeep. in as not, in foil not, hats. Or? Not foiled again. <laughs> okay. Does a foil wrap double up as the foil hat? How does that work? I That's what know. I'm wondering. He I was creating know. what, like a big antenna with twenty of these wrapped up in foil. So uh, one Sunday morning, this 25-year-old victim was inside a layer cake restaurant. Man, that sounds good. Uh, when she discovered her $1,200 iPhone was missing from her purse. 
Uh, oh. The victim was able to track the phone via her Apple Watch to a parking lot. How much is an Apple Watch? That's another four or five hundred bucks, isn't it? Oh Good yeah, God. Um, was able to track her iPhone uh, to uh, the, the parking lot behind the restaurant. And uh, surveillance cameras had captured uh, Montero coming and going from the Jeep. Officers uh, conducted surveillance of the Jeep. Uh, Montero, Montero, is that right? Montero? Yeah, Montero. Returned to his Jeep, saw the officers, and attempted to get in uh, to an Uber. <laughs> Of and, course. And leave. God. Dumb <laughs> criminals. 88 miles an hour. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's right. So um, they, uh, the police were a- actually able to get a warrant so they could search the Jeep Wagoneer, uh, and from which they had uh, actually they could see visibly uh, the victim's phone in there, so it was easy to get the warrant. And whenever they got into the, the, the Jeep Wagoneer, they discovered 17 cell phones Many of them wrapped in aluminum foil. Police theorized that the foil was used to it in an attempt to dis- diminish their signals. In other words, make them but, less trackable. But but what I mean, why is he stealing the phones? What getting information off of them, or is he reselling them? Oh, he's selling what? them. Yeah. So uh, it, and so, if anybody's wondering how many cell phones you have to steal, apparently the number is seventeen to make a grand wagoneer payment. Oh, 17, sure. <laughs> he, he needs to get with Nikki G and figure out what kind of foil wrap he needs to use for that. <laughs> yeah, because something's that. not Appar- right. He apparently, was- what he was using isn't working. Well, yeah, I don't think any amount of foil has helped Nikki G so far, so he may not, okay. be, the, All right. <laughs> he may not be the one to contact. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I mean, how blatant, first off, to park behind the restaurant. Number two, it's still going to ping. They were able to probably figure find her phone because of that. He's not too brilliant. I, I, they didn't say if the phone, the one he had just stolen, was in foil or not, because I find it interesting that she was able to track it with her, her watch, her Apple watch. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's, it's just so sad. And I wonder, it, you know, she said her purse, but what do you think the odds are she let, left it laying out on the table or something and he walked by? People do it. that all the time. Or they, I see women walking around with their purses wide open. Really? Are you just asking to be stolen? Like, come on. But yes, I think either way would work. It'd be really easy to bump into her, and if you're a good grifter, you could actually lift pretty good, pretty quick. Mm-hmm. She wouldn't even know. There's no telling how many phones this guy has stolen. And oh yeah, I I, I don't know about you guys. I refuse to pay twelve hundred dollars for a phone that is so easily broke or stolen or or I'm sorry, just lost. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, well, if you if you look at every time they have a new phone, there's people just standing in line to give them their thousand dollars. It's amazing. Think about well, how much money be- that is. That's because they make sure the older phones don't work anymore. Remember, I talked about this electric thing. They just slow. I swear, they slow it down until you're forced to do an update or you're forced to get a new phone, no matter how hard you try. It's well, crazy. You, but there's some out there that just want the newest thing. It's a, it's a. Uh, well, that's true. They get to show it off, you know, at work yeah. or their Ooh. friends or whatever. Oh my gosh, yeah. you have that, and of course that begats uh, more people uh, doing the same thing. So, and uh, I don't know how insurance works. Uh, can you can you damage the phone yourself and then use it uh, the damaged phone to get uh, uh, yeah, an if, upgrade? If yes, well, they don't necessarily give you an upgrade. They give you like, so they'll send you another right. refurbished phone if it's damaged. But that, that warranty's panned out to be pretty good. I mean, I had a iPhone 6 for a while, and um, it was doing weird things in the actual programming. And so I'd get a new one, and then I had to redo every, you know, set everything oh up again. God, and then it, I hate that part. I, I went through probably three or four of them, and we finally said, okay, we're done. Like, we're just done with the i6. And I think part of it was they just weren't fixing the problems, and it just kept getting worse and worse. But, you know, I use it for work, so it's... It was important that I had a phone. So eventually we had to go and, you know, upgrade. And that's when you discover, because in the beginning of iPhones, you could get them for free. Or you could get them with a bundling package and you didn't have to pay very much. Not anymore. $99 phone. (laughs) Yeah, not anymore. So then you're on a payment plan for three years because who the heck can afford that, you know, so. So I haven't heard uh, anything mentioned about it for a while. But, you know, Tesla was coming out with a phone uh, that was supposed to be an iPhone killer. Oh, and on top of that, uh, I know that uh, Elon Musk was talking to T-Mobile 
about uh, having the T-Mobile phones uh, being able to make calls through the Starlink satellite system. That would be interesting. Mm -hmm. Uh, It would be amazing to have a satellite phone that you weren't paying, you know, $1,000 a a, a month or something to to use. (laughs) Yes. Yeah, because the new phones switch over to satellite when you run out of service, but I can just imagine what it costs the minute you ping that. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Can you imagine? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, the, uh, the I could see actually I could see it all going uh, all the cell towers going away, and it'd be all satellite. I mean, if they get the number of uh, Starlink satellites up there, they're talking about, and uh, having your own space agency uh, kind of makes that uh, kind of a certainty. Well, here's a little PSA moment I can share that somebody's been passing around. If you're stuck or stranded, and you're because we get a lot of people up in the mountains to hike, believe it or not, and get mm-hmm. lost. Sure. But uh, they're talking, saying that minute you realize that you're stuck or lost or whatever, if you record a new message of about your location or where you're going or heading, even when your phone dies, people can call that phone and they'll get that message. The message still works. So that was kind of interesting. Uh, you talking actually, about voicemail? Yeah, actual yeah. voicemail to leave a message. That makes sense. The, the yeah. greeting is what you're talking about. Change Correct. your greeting. Yeah. Yeah, and you can do that temporarily, like people all, you know, if you're on vacation, I'm on vacation this week, but instead of just having your phone and hoping it is charged, it stays charged, you know the battery's running out, you, maybe you're hiking somewhere or you're, gosh forbid, got stuck in a Jeep somewhere, um, record where you're at or where you think you're at, where you're heading or what you're planning to do as your greeting, as your voicemail, and then anybody who's trying to find you can hear that and understand what's transpired. Right. I thought it was interesting. It, yeah, yeah. That, that's a great idea. And, of yeah. course, uh, now we know that uh, you need to take a, a, a drone with you uh, everywhere you go. Yes. <laughs> you know, so you you know can, what I'm talking about? <laughs> yes. That story we did where they used that drone to find them. They, yeah. they used you it to… put in the text message, and, of course, you don't, yeah. uh, you don't have a signal. You attach it to the, the drone, take it up yep. above the trees, and the text message gets sent. <laughs> That's right. As yeah. long as your message isn't, I'm on the mountain and a bear's chasing me, and that's the last thing you hear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's interesting because there's several technologies that uh, when people think about it, they can make use of, and they're used in ways that uh, most people wouldn't even think about. So those those are the, the, the brilliant instances that uh, being yes. scared of dying will, uh, <laughs> will create. Exactly. Um, so in, in then back to the emergency thing, can you, can you imagine that now if you're uh, lost in the wilderness – your cell phone being attached to satellites, you just oh, make a call. Better. Yeah. yeah be or better. send that text message because there's a satellite over you any, anywhere in the world. So, Well, that's, that's partly why we say don't wheel alone because oh, generally yeah. between all of y'all, you can figure out somebody has to go get help or somebody can call for help. Mm-hmm. But uh, if you are alone, at least you have some options now. Well, well, Josh and I reported on a story many years ago now here on the show about a couple that went out uh, wheeling and uh, they got stuck in snow and they uh, I think they had to walk out because uh, they didn't have signal. Uh, they were going to freeze to death and uh, they, they stayed there as long as they could. And then, you know, it was re- it was a really bad uh, blizzard that they were in. I think it was Oklahoma uh, where this occurred. I can't remember for sure. But uh, they could have uh, very, they very nearly came close to dying. And wow. having that communication, that worldwide communication uh, is really going to make a big difference. And mm-hmm. uh, people will just make fun of you instead of uh, being happy that you're still alive. It's like, oh, well, that was a stupid thing to do. Good well, thing the and, phone was there. <laughs> yeah, and actually, right. that's that's why we talk about um, if you do wheel alone, uh, don't recommend it. But if you do, if you can have a satellite, great. If a satellite phone, if not, then get a ham because that also could have helped them in that situation. I'm sure, but mm-hmm. yeah, people don't do that, you know. Yep, yep. And then you also need to learn how to use it and know what frequency to get on. Uh, f- so that uh, that is used by emergency responders. So exactly. all those things yeah. are very important to find out before you go. Yep. All right, Larry, I know this is you. The uh, only thing I'm surprised about is where it's located because I would have uh, thought it was uh, in your state. Jeep <laughs> crashes into Amish buggy in Lincoln County. <laughs> I think this happens a lot. I think they run into these buggies all the time. Oh, my gosh. You think they do it on purpose? the amount of Amish buggies I see when I'm out and about. Ah, yeah. ah here we go. <laughs> I, I don't think it's on purpose. I think people just get complacent, probably. And it's like, you know, running into 
somebody on a motorcycle or a bicycle or a pedestrian. I think mm-hmm. it's happening all the time. We just don't always see it. <laughs> so, ah. so a 24-year-old woman was driving a Jeep Compass. So everybody, everybody j- does a sigh of relief. Oh, thank God it yeah. wasn't a Wrangler or a Gladiator. It wasn't a Wrangler. <laughs> Ooh, okay, we're safe. <laughs> it wasn't me. Uh, on Route 17 in Somerville, uh, about uh, 7.50 a.m., way too early to be drinking, uh, when she attempted to pass a horse and buggy, according to the Lincoln County Sheriff's Office, she ended up sideswiping the buggy, uh, hitting its left rear wheel and dislodging oh my it. Gosh, you know what? People need to learn where their rear tires are. Hello. Well, people need to learn the, <laughs> what, the where the side of their Jeep is. What, well, this where's is the true edge? too. Oh my gosh. Because I mean, the wagon was moving so fast, I. Had... <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, luckily, uh, nobody was injured, and not oh. even the horse was injured. Oh, which you thank know, you. I think uh, I think everybody's a horse lover, right? I mean, yes. unless you've been bit and thrown across a field. <laughs> but even then, you love them. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so nobody was hurt, and uh, we do have a picture here uh, in our show notes, and it'll be available in uh, this episode eight thirty seven at jeeptalkshow dot com. So, what do you guys think? Does this make any sense to you guys whatsoever? I mean, there's not a lot of information here for. I don't see how it would be. It would be easy to hit something like this. You think maybe well, the guy swerved at her? <laughs> no, 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 no. You're not going to go around me. This is this is a wannabe race no. car driver in an Amish buggy. <laughs> I think it's the 24 year old. Maybe not as much experience. But when you pull out to pass somebody, you get over. You don't just keep going forward and then eventually get over. Um, she probably just didn't even realize that she has rear tires on there and clip something. I mean, people do it on the trails all the time. So, so I, this looks kind of like a, it's not a, a paved road. So maybe she was concerned about getting off in the grass and losing control. I don't think this yeah. was the road. This is probably where the buggy ended up, don't you think? Because uh-huh. that doesn't even look like a highway. I don't know that they could drive it very far without a, without yeah. the wheel. Looks like it's heading up to their farm, but I would just imagine they weren't paying attention because, you know, in a lot of areas I end up in, there's almost always an Amish buggy somewhere, mm-hmm. believe it or not. And it's a lot of times around off-road parks. Do you have any problems getting around them, uh, Larry? Do they, they hog the road? or No. No. And, I and, and you always so. got to remember that unless it's a unique situation, they have the right-of-way anyway. Mm-hmm. Well, that doesn't, seem, and, that doesn't seem fair. We got the electronics and all the horsepower. <laughs> nope. Still on the books. <laughs> Equestrian trumps everybody. Yeah, you know, especially the s'more, the uh, off-road ranch here in Missouri, there's a couple of big Amish communities right there by it, and you go right through the middle of it on your way to the park. So you, it's it's not uncommon to see a couple of buggies on the on the, the road or, you know. But, yeah, it's uh, normally your biggest obstacle is just uh, not sliding in what the horse left. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. So, um, I, I would think that it's kind of, it, it's not any kind of uh, irritation, right? I mean, having them on the road, I mean, I would think it's kind of nice seeing a, ho- a horse and buggy on the road. Yeah. Well, they're usually, depending on the owner, they usually put sort of feet on them. They either have shoes or they have special things that are attached so that they don't slip on things. Most um, owners, because I think in the Amish community, the horses are like a beast of burden. They use them for a lot of things. Mm-hmm. So they do take care of them fairly well, from what I understand. So I think it's a something that they would make sure that they were fine on that hard surface. Right. I just hate to hear this. Uh, I mean, I hate to see this, and I'm sure that the uh, the young lady that uh, uh, you know did the uh, the NASCAR move on them uh, it was uh, was upset as well. He's trying to do a pit well, remove maneuver. <laughs> say, well, exactly. What I was going to say drafting pit, pit maneuver on the on the. <laughs> yeah. Never, never draft the uh, Amish. Uh, you, no. <laughs> yeah, just leave that for the 18 wheelers. Uh, they love it, by the way. <laughs> All right. So the 2023 Jeep Compass 4x4. Did you guys know the Compass looks like this? Mm-hmm. So again, we're looking at our it show notes. It looks like notes. a Cherokee. Yeah. Now we're looking yeah. at the show notes uh, for uh, 837 again, which uh, you, you, you guys are can you see. Are you sure? It's a compass, yeah, they're, not a they're Cherokee. They're short. It's like a short Cherokee. Yeah, yeah. It's a, a baby, a baby Cherokee, a baby Grand Cherokee. So what I what I thought they should have called the uh, the uh, the new uh, the new Cherokee would be a baby Grand. Um, and you know, I 
I saw another story, and we've reported on this before. Uh, they've uh, idled the plant where they were making the Cherokees. So, yeah, they sent it somewhere else, right? Mexico, wasn't it? Oh, no, they're they're, they're going to stop making it. I thought we reported on that. That was a story oh, I, I saw tonight. Oh, completely stopped on yeah, this. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and now we see this, and it makes a little more sense, at least to me, if you're going to be making something that looks like the Cherokee, but not with those squinty uh, uh, headlights, uh, that looks more like the the very well selling Grand Cherokee. It, it, it I can see why they're not that they're going to be making a compass and not a Cherokee anymore. Does that make sense to you guys? Oh yeah. Well, let's think of they got make a Cherokee and they make a Cherokee long. So now is this a Cherokee short? <laughs> <laughs> How or, many versions or, of it do you need? Yeah, or a Cherokee squared? <laughs> I mean, what is it? Yeah. What does it mean? I'm uh, yeah. looking forward to the cubed one. Yeah, uh, yeah. the square root of the Cherokee. Um, so uh, this uh, has a new uh, exterior look. Uh, it's kind of a shape of a junior Grand Cherokee. Its interior uh, no longer a penalty box. <laughs> I like that. The powertrain carried over, and thus the Cherokee failed to gain meaningful ground on the com- competition of the fully congested segment. For 2023, the Jeep has tossed the 2.4 liter inline four uh, in the dumpster where it belongs. In its place is a more desirable turbocharged 2.0 liter inline four, similar to what that can be found in the Jeep Wrangler. So um, this, I mean, it's a good looking vehicle. I mean, if you like the Grand Cherokees, uh, it it is a good looking vehicle and it it has more of that uh, Jeepy look, at least from the Grand Cherokee perspective. It's going to be cheaper too, right? Oh, no, I doubt very seriously it's ever going to be cheaper. Well, never cheaper. I, well, I think the Grand Cherokee is going to be more expensive oh, than the Compass. cheaper than the Grand, probably. <laughs> yes, that's what I'm saying. The Compass is going to be cheaper. You'll have a look like the Grand, yeah. but you're not, you're, not buying, you're not spending the money on the Grand. So, I don't know about you guys, but th- I thought that I haven't looked at really looked at a lot of Compasses, but the ones that I saw from a, a few years back was a ugly thing. I mean, I They were Je- awful, yeah. I know Jeeps are supposed to be ugly, but this wasn't even an ugly that you that a mother would love. Mm-hmm. And they've got to be really ringing out that little engine, a two liter pumping out two hundred horse. Oh yeah, so those it, are really they're really ringing out the horsepower out of that thing. Is anybody concerned about the the, the two point oh liter uh, not really lasting very long? I, I just get the feeling that whenever they're doing that stuff to it, that it's not going to have uh, it, it just isn't going to have a lot of miles on it before something has to be replaced. Yeah, I, I don't think I don't think it's something I would do, but yeah, it seems like they're really trying to milk every uh, every bit of horsepower out, out of that little bitty engine. So. Yeah, and that hurts your MPG. I mean, look at what happened with the the four cylinder and the Wranglers. Uh, the the TJs were very heavy vehicles for that four uh, that uh, four cylinder that they had in there. And by the time uh, you were getting any kind of uh, MPG gains out of something that small, uh, you lost it by having to move that weighted vehicle with the frame around. So uh, I don't know. Uh, I mean, they are they are making strides with engines, but I don't know that this is uh, this is the way I'd want to go. I mean, if you're only planning on keeping it two to three years, uh, hell, the government might tell you that you got to get rid of it and get a EV in two or three years. Well, it is the engine they put in the four by E. Right, but it's only part of the engine since there's right. two right. drivetrains or two engines in it. Yeah, I mean, uh, talking to Matt on uh, on the, the uh, Discord or it was on, on the Zoom, he really defends that 2.0. Uh, he really likes it, uh, and uh, I don't know how much of that is how much uh, that how good it is or how much it is. I bought it, so I want it to be the the right choice. So anyway, uh, they're uh, going to be doing this with the uh, the the two liter inline four, and uh, yeah, so uh, peak torque arrives at seventeen fifty RPM, which is nice compared to thirty nine hundred uh, in the two point four liter. So it uh, sounds like it's going to give it more torque, and uh, yeah, at least you know that the four by e uh, has this engine, and uh, it, at least if you don't hear anything bad with with uh, the the four by e, you shouldn't hear anything bad with uh, with this one with the same engine. I like that. I like it whenever one engine is being used in multiple vehicles. Make it all three ninety two. More parts too. Oh yeah, make them all three ninety two. That would be cool. Yeah, that really would be cool. <laughs> you need slicks on the back. <laughs> all right. So you want to fabricate? I do. So I find. I'm the last to know I, these things. <laughs> most people do. I find that most Jeepers and off-road enthusiasts love to build and fabricate. 
So whether you're building from store-bought items or you're totally fabricating, but typically it's a little bit of both. And it really depends on your level of experience. Some people have a lot of experience when they start this and others are totally brand new to fabrication. We all come at this just a little bit of different. But I find that most of the people who are not able to be creative in their job are really creative in a garage uh, when they're fabricating. That That's a sense. way for them to, to express most of their creativity. And for me, I really like bending tube and creating things out of uh, tubing. And whenever I can weld aluminum, when I TIG weld, I love chasing that little blue light all over aluminum. That's kind of my go-to. So the blue light is from the, the welder or the color it makes while you're doing it? Yeah, it's more from the welder, right? So a lot of times you hear welders talk about they like chasing that little blue light. So whether you're MIG or TIG or stick, it's usually always about that little blue light. It's addictive. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. So a couple things, I've put together a couple things here. If you're wanting to start welding, if you're looking for your first welder or you're just looking for another welder, whatever you want to spec out for your first toy, some of the things that I look for and some of the things that I think you should look for too when you're looking for your when you're looking for your first welder. And it can be many of things, and the key thing right up front is what do you want to weld? And you may not know that yet. Are you wanting to get into roll cages? just basic fabrication, or you don't know what you want to do yet, you just want to weld. And that's and that's okay too, because sometimes you know you want to start, but you just know, don't know yet what you want to start welding. Let me ask you a question real quick. So when you, when you say, what do you want to weld? Are you talking about the type of material or the, the, the shape of the material or? The or the thing. Yeah, I mean, uh, or maybe something on your Jeep. Uh, and uh, I don't know if you're talking about material or like tubing, for example. Yeah, so it really is all the above. Yeah, right? I was afraid see, of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I knew that was coming. Because, you don't. let's say you want to weld on your Jeep. Well, then that, that's kind of like, okay, I know the area now. Now, which part do I want to weld on? Do I want to weld on tubing? Or am I going to weld on a frame? What am I going to... What am I going to create on my Jeep, right? And and sometimes I find people actually start fabricating and it becomes an art project. <laughs> yes. Right? This is so and much see, fun. I want to stick something else to, to this. <laughs> I like the blue light. Let's keep very, going. Very talented welders that make just artwork, uh -huh. and it's amazing. So the other part of that is what's your skill level and, and this is where the, the hard part is because you kind of got to be honest with yourself and kind of assess where you're at. You know, I'm, a, I'm more of a hobby welder. I used to do a lot of fabrication for my job, and I don't do as much there. I think that's why I migrate to it now so much, you know, fabricating in my garage. And then, So is it, is it the actual fabrication or just the smell of burning stuff? <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit of both, actually. Yeah, I, I, met you, I would imagine there's a little bit of, uh, uh, when you smell that smell, it reminds you of uh, times of uh, things that you've built. You know, the, the one you really got to watch for is when you're welding, you're like, I smell something burning. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> That's, That's me. me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> so, going back, let's say, let's see, uh, I would think that the if you're not doing fabrication on your Jeep, you're probably doing some repair work to it. Um, right. And and I'm thinking frame. So the frame is that would be steel would be the material, and and would you be able to do if they, if that's correct? Correct me if it's not. Yes. yes. And, and, and if that's what you're going to be welding on or welding something to, uh, you need to have something to clean off the surface so that you can actually because you have to have a a clean non painted rust free surface to weld to. And right. then, and then you need a similar material that you're welding to it. I mean, you're not taking aluminum and welding it to steel, right? No, it, it'll be similar materials. But you know, as we go through this segment, or say multiple segments, we'll start covering more of those type things, so that if you have to make that repair, 
you'll know what to do and uh, kind of get a really good direction of how do I prep, what do I need to weld it, what kind of material do I need. You know, it's uh, it's kind of a very broad question that there's a lot of answers to. Oh, gosh. No, well, that's the learning <laughs> part, right? Yeah. So, so, so as you, go ahead. I was going to ask you if there was a YouTube channel or something you might mention that people can go to if they're brand new looking to try to do some welding. Is there or is there a book or something you recommend for people that are super brand new yeah. trying to figure this out? Yeah. So you know, I I'll always promote. You know, I have a YouTube channel, Jeeping Mo. We do a lot of uh, a lot of things like this where we show people how to get started fabricating, get started welding to bending and all of that. But there's a lot of information out there, right? So if you go out and look, I'd always promote Jeeping Mo for uh, my own selfish reasons, but there's a lot of information out there. Well, you can trust what you're telling them too. I mean, it's yes, not, right. it's, I was say. it's not 100% selfish. You, you know what you're, <laughs> what you're teaching yeah, people. He knows what he's doing, right. so follow him. Yes. You awesome. feel comfortable uh, referring yourself to people, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So when you're looking for your if you're looking for your very first welder or you're looking to start, you know, there's a couple things you really got to look at. And we'll go into this more in future segments. But some of the things you got to look at is what, your, what kind of power do you have available to you? Now, every welder is different. Do you have, have 110 or 220? Or you happen to weld off a generator. You know, I know that like Chuck, he weld, he does a lot of stick welding, and he welds off a generator a lot when he's out in the field, right? So what do you have available when you're trying to assess what kind of welder or what kind of equipment do I want to buy? And, and 220 is, uh, is preferable, correct? Correct. Yeah, because it's all about amperage, right? The more voltage, the more amperage you can draw out of that. And now we're talking it, about penetration and thickness of material, right? Correct. Right. So obviously the, the more amperage, the thicker material you can weld. And that's the and that really is kind of the pitfall in that you can lay down some beautiful looking welds. But they're just like icing on the top. There's no penetration to them. And we've done a lot to cover some of that on the channel that I can make a beautiful looking weld that I can literally just flick off of the steel. Mm. So there's there's a lot to it, and it's more it's not just about the Instagram welds that you see out there. That's <laughs> oh, they're beautiful stacks of dimes, and there's some very very talented welders out there that make beautiful welds. But not all welds that are beautiful are functional. And and, and that's why I, and it's just been years, but that's why they come back with X-rays that are for critical welds. Absolutely. And they x-rayed the wells so they can see the penetration and confirm that it is the penetration needed for the job. Right. And depending on what kind of field you're in, whether you're being x-rayed or any other kind of uh, testing, you know, most of the hobbyists, obviously, you would never get into that. But if you're actually wanting to get into a welding field and going to school, you'll get into that and you'll realize real quickly that it isn't always about how they look. It's more about how they function, and a lot of times the looks are in for the ride, and you can usually tell when a when a weld is good or not. Mm -hmm. It's a lot like the Jeeps. Uh, a a good-looking Jeep isn't necessarily the best off-road vehicle. That's right. There, there we go. And and you know, as you as you try to get into this fabrication, you know, one of the things you should really try to see is do you have any exposure to welding equipment out there? You know, maybe you have a friend that has some equipment. Maybe there's a welder at work that you can borrow. It would be good for you to get some time just with that, just to see if this is something you like or something you don't, because welding equipment isn't cheap. Mm -hmm. And it'd be nice just to, if you have a buddy show you or, you know, a coworker, just to see is this something I would like to do? Or is this something you want to invest your time and, and money into? And there's a good amount of support equipment that you need for, I mean, the welder isn't just all, everything that you need. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And that's, and that gets down to, you know, the next points here is that you have a lot of supplies you need. And it really depends on what kind of welding that you're wanting to do. Are you MIG, TIG, or stick? 
Will you need any kind of special gases, filler wires? You know, what kind of electrodes do you use? And it's good to find, a, I like to have a welding supply. Find one of those that can help you out. Now you can mail order everything, but it's good if you're just starting, try to find a good welding supply that kind of can help you on this journey a little bit. And that way, if you get a good one, they can try to steer you in the right direction a little bit as well, you know, if you don't have much experience. Well, and isn't there other equipment too, like you need the helmet, you need a jacket, gloves. Absolutely. And it's not just your, you know, running the mill stuff. You, you need to purchase things that will protect you from the exposure. Yeah, you'll only look at that light without a helmet on for a very short brief. And then you're trying to get that thing out of your eyes for a while. But, you know, as we go through future segments, we're going to get into what kind of gear you need, your helmets, your jackets, your gloves, some of the more things to look for when you're looking for a welder. So this will be an ongoing segment that will uh, try to steer, steer you in a direction of, hey, I want to fabricate, I want to get started. So here are some things that will help you get started and some possible equipment to do it as well. So, Larry, I know uh, that, like, if, for example, you want to replace the ball joints on your axle, you can go down to your local auto parts place. I always go to O'Reilly's whenever I was doing this before. And then you could, uh, quote, unquote, rent uh, the tool to be able, I always call it the, the big ass C-clamp. Uh, you could sure. rent the tool, you, you know, you bring it to your house, you use it, you take it back, and they, they, they never really actually charge your card. But uh, if you don't bring it back, then they charge it. So basically, you, you keep it, you buy it type thing. Is there anything like that with welding that you can do? Because, I mean, the friend thing sounds great, but what if you don't have a friend that does welding? Maybe you're the, the one that's going to be the, the, the person to start welding, and everybody else is going to come to your place to, to see if they want to learn how to weld. Is there any welding thing that you can uh, maybe not uh, rent for free, but are there welding machines that you can rent? Yeah, the only ones like that that I know of are the big industrial machines that, that you can rent. They come out on site, you know, they're generator ran. But, they, you know, that's a, that's a very expensive proposition to rent one of those. Mm -hmm. But a basic machine that you would use at a home, I've, I personally have never heard of heard of any of that not to say that it's not out there mm -hmm. but yeah well, we're, we're uh, just going on yeah we're just going on what you know uh so right. yeah i just thought i'd ask because that would be a nice situation and if there was my next question was going to be is it worth a crap after everybody that doesn't know what the hell they're doing <laughs> <laughs> has Be, used yeah, it. Beats it up. <laughs> i would say it'd be kind of like a rent a car if you will you never know what you're going to get right <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to this. I, I know I have a little bit of knowledge uh, about the welding stuff. I've never welded myself. Uh, I think that I could do that. I've, I've taught myself a lot of things, and it's even easier now with, uh, you know, the YouTube certified welders. <laughs> Not referring to yourself because you've actually done it uh, for a living, but uh, uh, yeah, there's a lot of information online, and it's, it's so much easier with uh, the visuals. Uh, that you can see what's going on. And, of course, you you show that on your uh, YouTube channel, uh, how you're welding things and, and doing fabrication. Uh, one of the things that I really enjoy, and sometimes it involves welding stuff, is your Tool Time Tuesdays. Uh, actually, it's probably not Tool Time. You'd have to get a, uh, get a Pamela yeah, Anderson Pat, to come on there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, our, dress, uh, our, our dress Duke up. Uh, but, uh, I, yeah, those are really cool because I like seeing those Tool Time things because I don't, I don't always know what the tool is that you're showing. Sometimes I do. Most of the time I don't. Right. Yeah, we try to bring some tools that are kind of unique, kind of out of the ordinary, if you will. So it's a lot of fun doing those segments. But, yeah, that's the whole goal of the, this, ongoing, this ongoing series, to try to lead people in a direction to be able to start doing some kind of fabrication, whether it's welding, bending, you know, get everybody to start building something i've always i've had a philosophy i put it on the channel many times that the country needs more people that can do things with their hands mm -hmm. and what i try to promote the useful things with their hands let's say it that way yeah okay well, this <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well let's clarify that okay well anyway larry thank you for this information but you know my uh, that i'm doing that ladies off-road network challenge 
and mm -hmm. one of the segments is to weld. We have two pieces of metal that we have to create sort of a bead on both sides, and then we have to actually design something and make something to be useful in the house. So I have all that stuff ready to go, but luckily Bill has done some welding, but trust sure. me, I'll, I will be reaching out to you if I need additional help because I've never done it. I, it looks uh, easy, like I'll just say that. I know it's not, but when I see people weld, I'm like, wow, you know, there's putting a bead down, it connects and all that. I know there's a lot of things that you need to know, so I may be reaching out to you going, can I have some Always help, Always happy please? to help. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I but, think, and I, I've never done it, but I've done other things, uh, and I think it is just a matter of uh, doing it. Uh, trial and error, and, mm -hmm. and then and then uh, it always begats questions. Whenever you do yes, something, you go, absolutely. well, why did this do this? And then you go and see, and you, oh, okay, so I needed to do this before I did yeah. that. And then you go, okay, well, that took care of that. So, But the problem that I have is, number one, I need some more room in the garage to actually have the welding machine. <laughs> yeah, I, I want a MIG welder. I've, I've done enough uh, research about it where I think I want a MIG and not a, a stick. Uh, MIG is so much more controllable and just more versatile from, from what mm -hmm. I've seen. And then if I want to get a MIG, then I have to have a, 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 a tank of gas. Oh, and I need something to put the tank of gas on along with the, the wig, the, the wig, <laughs> the, the welder. And now the, the gas is there so I can get a clean weld because if you weld in oxygen, and I, I'm, I'm going through uh, Larry's next three segments, uh, three episode segments. <laughs> he's, I know. Like, but, he's like, stop it, Tom. But I'm doing it but, fast. So, you know, Larry well, you, will do you it know slow. You can, do that with, you, you can do that without the tank of gas as well. Can you? Do you just have to you blow can. on it, take a drink of alcohol, and blow on the weld while you're doing it? Oh my well, God. you'll have to you have to wait for that segment to hear why. <laughs> hear That's how. right. You gotta listen. You gotta so, figure it out. But, but I'm looking at all these things, and then and then I need a 220 volt outlet. So you know, I either need to wire something up myself uh, or have a uh, a plumber, have an electrician come yeah. out, have and, a plumber come out, see how that works for you, <laughs> and put that put that thing up on the wall. And do I have enough amps at my house? to be able to support what I want to weld, you know, and then of course there's always the trick of going and if you've got a, a 220 for your uh, your dryer, those things are usually close to the garage. So now you just get a big ass cable that's, you know, four or $500. <laughs> that you can, uh, honey, are you done welding? I need to dry some clothes, damn it. Exactly. <laughs> I, I did not say this was cheap. No, exactly. No, it's not, but it's really interesting. And that's the other thing right. that you mentioned about it was the artistic side of things. Yes. Because you can create art with this stuff. yes that would be so cool i don't know if you guys have ever seen on instagram but there's a few people i know a few of them that actually have they do i don't want to call it sculpture but they take a piece of mere polished stainless steel they lay out a pattern and they tig well over it to where slowly this shape appears it's a mural on top of that polished stainless it's it's Really wow. beautiful artwork, mm -hmm. and wow. there's oh, and you can do body work with uh, with a MIG welder. So whenever you need to replace some rusty body body that body panels, mm -hmm. or maybe you've bent the hell out of a rocker, and you just say screw it, you cut it off, and you uh, tack weld it in, and then weld the thing in, and uh, grind it down, and put paint on it. So yeah. there's so much you can do, and it, it, it's so convenient uh, to let to be able to do that, even exhaust work. You know, if you need to change the exhaust on your on your Jeep or any vehicle, now you can uh, weld the exhaust stuff in. So instead of having to take it down to uh, the, uh, the, uh, the radiator shop or wherever, uh, the, the muffler shop, now you can do all that stuff yourself. It just makes you a lot more uh, able to take care of your own stuff. Yeah, I'm and, looking and forward to just learning the basics because I see where we've had, not all the time, but occasionally there'll be some trail issues and like Larry has mentioned, you know, you could do like a portable welder. Oh, he, and and he can, has one and of those. You, yeah. I know. And you can fix things on the trail to get you off. And to me, having a little bit of knowledge would be nice to be able to say, okay, this is above my knowledge or, hey, I think I could do something like that. And I, I'm always impressed when I see women who weld um, and then, of course, men. But it's just like, wow, that's pretty amazing to have that skill set. So I'm looking forward to learning. And, and Larry, correct me if I'm wrong. And if you do so, you're going to get bad letters. But correct me <laughs> if I'm wrong here. But women can weld just as easily as men can. Oh, yeah. absolutely. And you know, be, being totally honest and not just sucking up that comment, <laughs> some of the some of the best TIG welders I know out there are actually all women. And yeah, here here's where I get the hate mail from the guys. 
because typically <laughs> when I've seen the women weld, they go into it with a, I can do this versus I know, I know, I know. Right. Yep. And then they, then they don't know. Right. So yeah. I've seen a lot of women do some very amazing work. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, absolutely. I mentioned what, it's what makes them uh, good uh, uh, shooters as well because they're uh, they're a little more steady, and that that steadiness and welding it makes a big uh, difference. I think we're willing to take whatever direction and learn, as opposed to like Larry said, you know, having sort of that on my shoulder. Oh, I've I've done that once before. I don't need any help. Yeah, and that's yeah, that's I just I don't think and, that's, and that's <laughs> but that's normal with a lot of things. Even look at us when we when we get somebody who needs to learn how to drive their jeep. I get you know different attitudes. So. It's in every realm of, of everything we do in this world is just, you know. So I thought about you the other day, Wendy. I was watching this lady. Uh, doing, oh, no. <laughs> was, she was trying to guide this guy uh, over an obstacle. And, and she was going a little more passenger, a little more passenger. Oh, and he no. Was, and he was going driver, driver, driver. And she, and, goes, like, and she goes, well, whatever you want to do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's like, I'm done with you. Yeah, and oh. it, it was it was friendly, but it's like, or, or do what you want to do. <laughs> exactly, just do whatever. Yeah, I don't know and why I'm standing here. <laughs> yep, and that leads into that'll lead into our trail welding segment. Oh, good. Yes, good, yeah. excellent. That'll that, be fun. So. Let me ask you, Larry. Uh, whenever you, uh, I know um, uh, Matt had a problem with his trailer. Did you have to weld anything for that, or is it just cut off? That was just cut the bearing race off the spindle. Uh huh. Luckily, we didn't have to do no welding on that. Good, good, good. Um, I, so, was there any welding at EJS? I can't remember. I know that there was a problem with uh, Rich's, uh, um, not a Johnny joint, but like a Johnny joint. Uh, he couldn't get it seated properly, but there was no welding with that. No, there was no welding on that. So, so you that know, was, that's it was your vice, your, tr your trail vice right. that you were using. Yeah. Right. It's like most things when you buy insurance, you never use it. <laughs> yeah, Murphy's Law. <laughs> Yeah. Yep. Like, Better to have I, it than be looking for it. Ever since I bought my trail welder, it sits in the box. I welded a few things at home with it, but that's about it. Yeah, very cool. But it's nice to have. Uh, you Absolutely. actually had to, you had to change out the rear coil springs on your uh, GLU because of all the stuff you're carrying, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> that might have happened. <laughs> Well, great segment. Thank you, Larry. And uh, I personally am looking uh, uh, really forward to learning something on this one. So good job. All right. Thank you. Hey, this is Nikki G, and I'm still vacationing in Florida. I don't really have anything new to say, so I'm just going to see if I can rattle off 10 jokes in the two-minute time allotted oh my gosh. on the voice call. I can't guarantee that I'll be funny. <laughs> well, I, I can't guarantee any of them will be funny. We know the odds, Dickie. Yeah, we already know. Yeah. <laughs> I read the blue ship collided. The sailors were marooned. My friend gave me a new roof for, for free. Yeah, he said it was on the house. Oh, God. <laughs> Did you hear about Going the teenager downhill. who failed his driving test? Yeah, he thought it was a crash course. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Where do surfers learn to surf? At a boarding school. Uh, that Aww. must suck how they get in there. Jeez. A duck walks into a bar and buys everyone around. Yeah, he put it on his bill. <laughs> that oh. one wasn't much better. <laughs> He's what do you call a wizard that's good? Oh, gosh, that's horrible. What do you call a wizard that's good at ceramics? Harry Pottery. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. I went to see the Liberty Bell. I wasn't impressed. Yeah, it wasn't all that it was cracked up to be. Well, oh, no, yep, yep, that's yep. Yeah, lame. Okay. How do Vikings communicate? Norse code. <laughs> Yeah, I, don't I like, like that one. Either. I like that one. Where's the players? Played that tennis <laughs> <laughs> oh, I played that tennis like game with a birdie. I did enjoy it. It was uh. bad mitten. <laughs> <laughs> that one was bad. And number 10. The best music to listen to while fishing is something catchy. <laughs> you know, I, I still got time. Let's keep rolling. Hey, what kind of shoes do lazy people wear? Loafers. Yep. <laughs> I tell you, I'm in the state of Florida. Yeah, it smells exactly the way it looks, like a penis. <laughs> so I hear. Oh, my gosh. I really didn't think I could do it. All right, boys and girls, I'll chat you later. You have a good one. Bye. <laughs> oh, my God. Is now Nikki that's... quitting and he had to get them all in at one time, or what was he doing there? Uh, it well, was one minute, 59 seconds. He had one yeah. second left. <laughs> my gosh. And the other thing is, did he use them all up for the rest of the year? Does he have more? I mean, Oh, he my God. Rattled, he has he so many. Obviously. <laughs> oh, 
Well, thanks for the calling ultimate in. Ultimate dad Mickey. jokes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm like, you read out of a book. Oh, my gosh. Some of those were, yeah, you're right. They didn't even make it. All right. So another must have for your Jeep. So uh, as promised, a OEM switch. Now, I know this is for the older Wranglers, but it is pretty cool because most TJs, I guess unless it's a Rubicon, you have additional uh, little holes, uh, not round holes. Of course, that would be easy to put the switches in. These are rectangular holes for the special uh, OEM style uh, switches. So you can actually get the OEM style switches uh, from Amazon. Uh, for example, this one that I found was a, a Jeep TJ 97 through 2006 rocker switch with the compressor logo on it. 23 hmm. bucks. Uh, it is really easy to get to that panel. It's really easy to pop out that little rectangle I was talking about. And you pop this thing in, you wire it up, and now you can turn your compressor on and off right there for at, the, at your fingertips, just right above the shifter if you've got a standard uh, transmission. Uh, I've uh, installed a couple of these in my wife's uh, 2003 TJ uh, for lights, and uh, it just it, it looks factory because it is factory. And that's really cool. And you have uh, additional things that you can turn on and turn off uh, with uh, something that doesn't take up any more room than what came from the factory. I think it's really cool. Uh, these, nice. Yeah, these switches are weather-resistant. Custom-made uh, switch is perfect for running aftermarket accessories. It is not a replacement for your stock uh, switches. This switch simply snaps in and replaces the blanks in your existing panel. Comes oh. complete with uh, three wire pigtails. Hot in, load out, and ground wires. Great for running off-road lights, rock lights, backup, uh, air, uh, backup lights, air compressors, and much more. I mean, really anything that you that you want to hook up to it. Uh, but And they do have multiple uh, silkscreen images on them. So this one uh, that we have uh, the link for in uh, our show notes is uh, for a compressor. Uh, air compressor, but you they have them for lights. They have them from all kinds of things. I, I think they may even have one that says zombies, although I don't know that you'd want to turn a zombie on. I'm not judging. <laughs> and we had a couple of TJs with us on the uh, the event in Texas, too. Yep. Uh, it's, a, it's a great thing to do. And if you weren't already aware, I, I know you guys have seen those little blanks and you wonder about that. And, uh, you know, and you try to put one of those ARB switches in there and, it, you know, it may work. You may be able to get it uh, in there, but it sure looks a lot better when it uh, looks like it came from the factory like that. Mm. Absolutely. Pretty cool. All right, so uh, I want to remind you that on our Friday uh, episode is our interview episode. That's tomorrow, and we're going to be talking with Jeffrey Foley, a kilted trail guide. And yes, you have to pay extra uh, tipping, if you will, uh, for you to sh see uh, what's under the kilt. <laughs> Can I pay to not no. see? <laughs> Well, this really depends on how the day's going, I think. Oh, my gosh. He's never going to want to come back on the show again if he keeps saying that. <laughs> oh, he's loving it. He knows. He, if, you, if you're brave enough to wear a kilt and yes. wear it properly, yes. uh, you're, you're already ready for every, anything yeah. that's going to come along. Yeah. He's and heard all this already. Yes. <laughs> of course he has. <laughs> well, it's always a little sad when we come to the end of the trail, but there's always another trail ride just down the road. Jeep Talk Show has four episodes a week, including now we're adding a fifth one on Mondays every once in a while, Tuesday through Friday. Subscribe and never miss an episode. Speaking of subscribing, consider keeping the Jeep Talk Show on the air by subscribing to the show via Patreon. It's the place to go for all the information. How to subscribe and how to contact us is jeeptalkshow.com slash contact. Oh, let's talk about chick chat very quickly here, uh, okay. Wendy, because we, we failed to do that, and we need to mention that. You you briefly mentioned it. We're looking at doing a, a, a chick chat every uh, every other Sunday or every other Monday, yes. record on Sunday, and then uh, uh, publish it uh, really on Sunday afternoon, but yeah. available for Monday morning, and uh, it's you and uh, Julianne. It is, uh, it's, the hosts are females. Yes. And, and uh, I'm not saying there's not other shows out there with females, but uh, this segment is dedicated to females hosting it. You guys who have on anybody you want, it, it doesn't just have to be females, but it is right. uh, women-centric, uh, Is I think is how we're putting it. Yeah, we're just going to try to inspire others who listen, whether male or female, um, to get out there and wheel. But we're going to be interviewing women doing all sorts of things from mega builds to simple builds to getting out to people from behind the scenes 
So we're going to just start going through the list of everybody that Julianne knows and my contacts, and we're just going to bring them to the show, and hopefully you guys enjoy the the, the chick chat. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. And you mentioned your interest in learning how to weld. Uh, maybe you can find a, a woman that is a welder that you guys can have on the show and get a female's yep. perspective on it. I've already got somebody in mind, so I'm going to be reaching out and hopefully adding that to our list. So, yes, we are very excited. Yeah, Yeah, very excited. You know, everything changes. Jeep Mm -hmm. used to be mostly metal, not plastic. Jeeps are now gas-powered. Who knows what they'll be in 10 or 20 years. Question is, do you consider your modern-day Jeep a Jeep? I do. Broadcasting since 2010.